I recall that years ago there was a great focus on uh, you know part eleven issues. Uh, is it that, that uh, right now they uh, they know how to deal with the, the part eleven, uh, or how do you see it? I don't think the validation of computers specifically is that much related to the part eleven, because. Computer validation has always been a GMP requirement since 1976. So it is not that, oh, all of a sudden Part 11 came and people are scrambling to validate. We knew we had to validate since 1979 when the GMPs became effective. So it has always been a GMP requirement in 211.68b that you need to validate your software. Okay? Uh, but in the early days, we didn't exactly know what that means and how to validate the software and so forth. So I would not say that Part 11 had anything to do with it. Part 11 really gave us all the headaches regarding how to control the electronic record itself. What do we have to archive? What do we have to look at? Not as much on the, uh, not as much on the validation side. So I think we have had many years of experience since 1979 on software validation. And maybe, maybe we did finally get it right because we had all these years of experience. So it, didn't, it, it did not come up just because of Part 11 in, uh, in, in 1997. To my experience, uh, having uh, been working with Part 11 issues for, for years, uh, it's still difficult to ensure the right interpretation of uh, Part 11 working with uh, electronic signatures and electronic records. Uh, how, why is it so difficult still ensuring that uh, the record stories is interpreted in the right way? In terms of interpreting the Part 11, I, th I think the biggest issue, based on my experience, based on what I see out there, is not the regulations on the uh, electronic signature itself. I think that's crystal clear that you need two devices and you need to change your password periodically and so forth. Those things are pretty much, um, pretty much, yeah, very straightforward. The areas where we are having the difficulty where, com where I see companies misinterpreting is when do you have electronic records and when do you have, to, when must you follow part 11 on those electronic records? And this is shared by the FDA because when the FDA issued their guideline, okay, when they issued their guideline on the flexibility for Part 11, they didn't offer us any flexibility on the signature requirement itself, on the uh, no, archiving, on, on, I'm sorry, not on archiving, on the changing of the password and so forth. But they gave us flexibility in the area that where we had difficulties in interpreting. So what are these? The most difficult one is, when do we have electronic record? And if we print something out, can we regard that as the official record and not have to follow Part 11? Another one is, for example, hybrid system, which the FDA clarified that you are allowed to use a hybrid system, whereas the original intent was no hybrid system. You cannot have half on paper. You cannot have half on, uh, on electronic. Um, they also gave us the flexibility and finally clarified about legacy system. The original requirement was, if you have a computer that does not comply with Part 11 as of the effective date of 1997, you are no longer allowed to use it. Now, with that new guideline, the FDA allows the flexibility that if your computer system was in compliance with the GMP, not Part 11, obviously, was in compliance with the GMP before Part 11 became effective, and it is no longer in compliance with Part 11, but still in compliance with the GMP, you're still allowed to use it. Yeah. Okay. So we have that flexibility. Another flexibility that got clarified was about archiving. The concern that we had originally was the FDA says you have to keep the old software and the old hardware to read your old data and to be able to print your old data. And of course, we had a lot of problem with that. We, with the technology, we are constantly changing software, upgrading software, and possibly even hardware. So they also clarify that in the guideline by saying you can produce a PDF or you can print it out. Of course, we don't want to print it out, but you're allowed to uh, produce a PDF of it, and you don't have to keep the old ones. So I think all of that has been clarified. The area that we still have 
misinterpretation, in my opinion, by some of my clients is when do you have an electronic record and so forth. Uh, the biggest problem I see out there is this, that a lot of companies are now saying, okay, I am going to print it out and now I can delete the electronic version. No, you're not. You cannot. You're not allowed to do that. That's the argument that I have with many of my clients regarding the misinterpretation of the Part 11. So in my opinion, Part 11 is pretty clear right now. I'm not saying we, it's easy to comply with. You know, it's, it's clear what, what, what the requirements are, how to comply. There are still some problems here and there because of the limitation of the software. But the only interpretation difficulty that we're having is the one on printed versus electronic, which is the raw data and which must we keep. But having, you know, uh, having the question on uh, when do we have electronic records, uh, I mean, when do we actually have electronic records? Because uh, this is a big, a big issue mm -hmm. and still is. Oh, that's an, easy, that, that's an easy one. When do you have electronic record? When you press the enter button. And that is what the FDA said. Before you push the enter button, you do not have any record because the information that you have up to that point has not been saved onto a durable medium. So that has been the traditional interpretation of the FDA. When you have all that data in random access memory, for example, it has not been saved onto anything that's durable, like a hard drive or flash drive or tape or CD, you don't have electronic record. But once you hit the save button, you have electronic record. The difficulty, just to expand on what I said before about the misinterpretation, is you have the electronic record, that's very clear, but is that electronic record subject to Part 11? That is the interpretation, okay? And the FDA in that guideline really, I think, clarified it. And basically what they said was, okay, you have created an electronic record, does Part 11 apply or not? And the way to interpret that is, you need to go back to that predicate rule. I'm sure you have heard that terminology used by them. You need to go back to the predicate rule, that if this is an electronic record that is required by the predicate rule, then you must follow Part 11. But if this is an electronic record that is not required by the predicate rule, but you just choose to keep it electronically, then Part 11 doesn't apply. Okay? So for example, the predicate rule, I don't want to go through all the, all the definition of a predicate rule, but just for our purposes in the industry, the predicate rule would be the GMPs. So for example, you create a chromatogram electronically. I have an electronic record, that's clear, but do I have to follow Part 11? And the answer to that is go back to the GMP. Does the GMP say that you must keep a chromatogram? So we go back to the GMP, we go to laboratory records on the 211.194, and 211.194, which is a list of what you must have in the laboratory record, one of the things that you must have as part of the laboratory record is charts and graph. A chromatogram is a chart or graph. So therefore, using that example, you generate a chromatogram electronically, Part 11 applies. In contrast, I'll give you another example. You perform training, but instead of signing a training um, attendance list, you scan your badge when you go into the training room. So your attendance at the training or your record of training is now captured electronically. Question one, do you have electronic record? Yes, we have an electronic training record, that's clear. Question two, is that electronic training record subject to Part 11? Now you gotta go back to the predicate rule. Back to the GMP. Go to section 211.25. Does it say that you have to keep a record on training? And it doesn't. It doesn't say. It only says that you have to perform training. So because the predicate rule, the GMP, does not require a training record, the fact that you choose to keep the a training record electronically Part 11 does not apply. I just want to clarify this because I don't want people emailing me saying, John Lee said training records are not required. I never said that. But because the words training record is nowhere to be found in the predicate rule, 
the fact that you keep it electronically, part 11 does not apply. So this is where I find the difficulty of people understanding it, and I sort of understand why. Look how long it took me to explain it. Yeah? And, and, and so that is the only uh, interpretation problem that I find on part 11. Otherwise, everything else has been clarified by the FDA in the guideline, or as originally written, is pretty much black and white. Yeah?